This is particularly uh, felt strongly about Matt from the, the earliest day of testing or even interviewing. I remember Francis coming up to me and saying, uh, you can go home now. He come, coming up to me and sending me home early. And I remember thinking, oh, you blow it, man. You didn't get the job. There's no way. And I remember uh, going and, and calling uh, my manager from Grand Central saying, I blew it. I didn't get it. I know it. And being very depressed about it. Only to find out that the reason he sent me home was because he, he knew he was going to cast me in the film. Later on, I discovered that. Of course, it was a highlight for me. All right. Here you go. This is a buck. You guys aren't exactly the same size, but you know, it's dry. Hey, it's, it's going to be cold where you're going. This character that Matt played had been in uh, New York City and uh, had come to Oklahoma from New York, so he had the, kind of the street smarts, the street toughness. Now, Matt is a dyed-in-the-wool New Yorker. He would like to think he was, but he wasn't really a tough New York boy. He was incredibly uh, handsome, a, a kind of mean toughness, but you still like him. Are you a real redhead? When he dies, I mean, you, you cared deeply that, of that loss because of Matt's performance. I'm Diane Lane. Diane Lane. Well, Diane Lane had been acting since she was, you know, six. <laughs> Have you ever uh, been in love with somebody? Yeah. <laughs> well, most important, I thought, was the first time I fell in love, or I thought I was in love. You know, she was just turning 16. It was from a kid to a, a real teenager. Leaving on the guy, just saying, look at me, look at me. Now, whatever you're going to do to make him look at you, I don't know. She was my cherry choice from the get-go. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Ralph. Ralph, doing it this way is like you're starting. Ralph was uh, was small. There was a kind of uh, toughness and a kind of sweetness at the same time. Okay. Plus, Ralph uh, had real acting chops. He was a little pro. Okay, anytime. One thing I clearly remember is anytime I was asked to read a different role. I was sort of bummed that, uh, well, maybe I won't get the Johnny part, you know, because I wanted to play. So I got to read Pony Boy. I think I read two bits once or twice, and I was too young and frail to be Dallas or anything. But I just wanted, I was specifically wanted uh, uh, to have the opportunity to play Johnny, and so, uh, so it, was, it was an exciting journey. You are living in a vacuum, Pony, and you're going to have to cut it out. I was kind of a, a fan of Patrick's. I had seen him in some cheesy movie, uh, Roller Boogie, or some roller skating dance movie. I found him very interesting, and I arranged to uh, meet him. Oh, man. He was older. He conveyed older than the other boys. I saw Sandy wanted was to give it back. In point of fact, he was a lot older, but he was able to play just the right amount of older. I never had a thing to do with her parents. Pony Boy uh, was the most difficult part to cast because uh, he tells the story. Fixed breakfast. Let's start off. Okay. The first one up has to fix breakfast, and the other two do breakfast. I'll never forget seeing Tom Howell for the first time. I walked into uh, the stage, and the auditions were already happening, and Tommy was playing Pony Boy. And they sent everybody back, and Tommy stayed. And then other people played their parts, and they sent everybody back, and Tommy stayed. And then more people came up and played different parts, and Tommy stayed. And I went, that's Pony Boy. All three of us like chocolate cake for breakfast. Mom and Dad allowed it with ham, never allowed it with ham and eggs. But he had such gravitas for a kid of his age. He has such weight. I just can't stand it who you guys find anymore. Francis and I both knew Emilio uh, a little bit. Sometimes I just have to get out. Marty Sheen had been our star on, on Apocalypse Now and had been in the Philippines. And the kids who were out there a lot of the time. So we had known Emilio uh, from all those months in the Philippines. I think it was a great choice because uh, he, uh, he had a lot of droll humor to him. You have six every night, pal. <laughs> Rosie Palm and her five daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, we're going to be late. Tom Cruise, you could see his talent from Taps, and uh, he took um, this testing process very, very 
seriously and was very intense. I remember him not so much being part of the boys playing around with each other between between tests, between takes. I think he was mooding up, getting into his character. He takes his acting very, very seriously and prepares very, very seriously. Try one that's like a seasoned gangster. gangster you know, like Take care, kid. I want to try this again real quick. In a sense, I was only interested in, you know, the magic they were going to make there reading the scene. I didn't realize that they were all <laughs> nervous, you know, of very course. Simple, very simple. You tend to want to go a little more fast. Okay. You've got to learn slowness. Okay. That's why I'm playing you this slow music. To me, it's all fun. And, of course, to them, it was life and death career. We had a wealth of talent to choose from there, and we just uh, made gut decisions on who we chose. Casting is, is the most fun of, of the movie-making process. The casting period, and when you make your decisions, it's all optimism. I guess we're different. So, maybe they are. I can never not get totally involved in the casting of a movie. It's just uh, in my DNA, I guess. Just checking hey. Diane's height. How tall are you? I'm five five. Five five. How much do you weigh? One hundred six. Let's do some poetry. 